Happy Valentine's Day! It is Street Talk! And I'm Loretta Rose, your host on location in Phoenix City at Dunkin' Donuts. We're going to take you inside and give you a wonderful Valentine's special. Today's show is about love, relationships, and marriage. So it's going to be something for everyone. So it's going to be interesting to find out what we're going to have on the table. So we got some comments coming in from social media and we're excited about letting you come in and see what's about to happen and i have some roses because it's valentine's day so happy valentine's to you join us with street talk here on ctvb Loretta Rose. Today we are on location in Phoenix City. As I promised, we have a Valentine's show for you. And I will start off by saying Happy Valentine's Day to you. So there's love in the air here in Phoenix City and we are about to pour it out to you. And if you ever given up on hope of love, hopefully this show will inspire you to know that never give up. So I am going to introduce my guest today. I have a wonderful, great balance of guests. And today's show is about love, relationship, and marriage. So first of all, I want to introduce this wonderful lady. We have been friends on social media. We met at a event. It was a community event. Right. And I was like, you've been my friend forever. Where you been? <laughs> and we just connected and she also worked in media as well. So many of you may have seen her on WLTZ with my great friend Dee Armstrong. Welcome to the show, Nicole. Thank you for having Nicole, me. Nicole, I am just so glad to have you and it is Jones. Yes. Yes. It's a pleasure to be here. Absolutely. And you are from Smith Station. From Smith Station. Yes. 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 So welcome to the show and I'm so glad to have you on because you have a unique love story. Yes. And you're a single parent. Yes. Of three. Yes. And talking about not giving up, you know, some people, there's someone here it's that works here and she's a single parent of five. So your story is a blessing to her and you don't even realize it. So I'm so glad to have you on so you can be that voice for other people that may be single or maybe dating to know that it's never too late. Don't give up. Right. So I want to get a little bit of how, you know, without going all into, you know, your your whole love story, but what happened to let you know that, okay, oh my God, it is possible. I'm going to try to make this as short as possible, but to make a long story short, I got married when I was 19 years old. Yeah, I got married, and when I got married, I had um, two of my, old, my oldest kids. I had two children by my ex-husband. To make a long story short, he cheated on me. Got a girl pregnant with triplets. Mm -hmm. Yes, and, and I tell people this so it can be. <laughs> I tell people this because it can be, it's a testimony to me, mm -hmm. right? Because you know, when you grow up in a family. For all of them. <laughs> I grew up in a household that was family oriented. My parents were together. So for my husband to create another family, you know, and I, I felt like I had to share my children with him. It was just, you know, it's just like, no way. I, this can't be happening to me. But it worked in my favor. And you know, God is so awesome. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh my goodness. You know, the, not trying to throw shade at him, but the, the place where I am now in my life, it's, oh we're in two different places, mm. you know, and I'm, I apologize to put it out there like that, but I want this But it's to be, a reality. Yes, yeah, someone, somebody out there yeah. needs to hear this. You know, you have to be patient. You have to let God do his work. Mm, yes, you know, I'm not, yes. I'm not sure, like, 
your viewers their religious background. Yes. But you know, I'm just speaking as far Honey, as they they got the background. Yeah. They they <laughs> they are people of faith and, and, and desire hope and inspiration. But those yeah. negative things they do work together for the good. And for when good. you do meet that person, mm -hmm. God has a way of making up for all those lost times. Yes, it does. You know? Yes. So, yes. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Mm -hmm. You're not bitter. Not at all. You're not still there. No. Mm -hmm. And that's what I hope somebody get by watching this show. Mm -hmm. Because if you would have stayed stuck there, you wouldn't be here. Not you at all. You wouldn't be able to not experience the present mm -hmm. that God has for you. Right. Yeah. And you would never know the walk of another person. Mm -hmm. I've never you shared that publicly, you know, until now. I am proud. But that's what it was. Yeah. And you look like you're about 20, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! I'm so you. proud of you. Never, ever would have known that because, just like you said, you never talked about that. Right. But that is a a, a, a force of hope for other people as well to know that there is life after what may seem like a disaster in your life. I'm proud of you. Thank that you. is great. See, I, you're gonna get more here, and as I um, added up. The combined years of marriage, we are bringing you over a century of years combined together with all of the married couples here of experience. That's amazing. That just blessed me when I started thinking about it. So our next couple, they are very dear to my heart as well. Um, they have a marriage ministry that they share with the community and they go out and do great things in the community. And what I love about Monica and John is that marriage is such a very strong foundation for them. And ever since I first met them, I've known Monica, you know, from high school because mm -hmm. she was a cheerleader and still is. <laughs> <laughs> she was a Central High School cheerleader and still is at heart. What's up? And but marriage is just their ministry. That's the best way that I can put it. And I'm so honored to have them on today. Thank you so much for adjusting well, your you. schedule. Because yes. I do know you did that. And but this is just we needed you here. Because you're out here in the community. You're working with people, not only married, but singles. Mm -hmm. Engage. So, engage mm -hmm. also. So please tell them all to tune in as well. Now let everybody know uh, how long you and John, you all been married and uh, about your ministry. Okay. Well, we have been married 28 years and we've been together, together 30, 33 years. years. Mm -hmm. So. And um, I'm going to talk about the ministry part, and I'll let him do all the other questions that I have you. But um, we feel that God called us to ministry probably about three years ago, mm -hmm. and um, yeah. John kind of got the vision for the, the ministry, what have you. And it's called Love and Marriage, and like you said, we are ministering to everyone. Um, there's such a need for married couples, the things that they need, they're struggling, and not that we're experts in it, but we have had success. And um, we've had some failures as well, but God has, has called us to be there to help other people through it. And we want to get to people before they actually get married. So that's the key. We don't want you to get married and not know what to expect, not to be equipped how to handle certain things. So that's why we open it to those who are single but one day aspire to be married and those who are engaged and as well as the married couples. I love so, that. You know, so we try to do like a mentoring type thing. Yeah. Those of us who are married or have a long or whatever, we can sow into the lives of the singles and the engaged. So that's what we, we're all about. That. And we are, like she said, we're not just within the walls of the church. We are for the entire community. Absolutely. I love that. And John is also a soul singer. <laughs> so you may have heard so. his voice. <laughs> Names, play, stage plays, mm -hmm. church. Yeah, John can sing. He'll sing you to sleep too. <laughs> so, John, tell us about your, the love of your life because you always make it abundantly clear. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm probably a little too possessive. I always say my wife, my wife. But um, yes, actually. We, uh, like she said, we've been together, been married 28 years together, 33, but I knew, and this may seem a little strange because I was only 13 years old, but <laughs> I was in the eighth grade. She was in fifth grade. One morning she got on the bus. You know, I'd always seen her, you know, but she was, she was younger. She was in fifth grade, so I didn't really 
have a whole lot of interest in her like that. But she got on the bus one day, and something said to me, that's your wife. And I ain't paid that much attention. I'm in eighth grade. I ain't thinking about no wife. You know, you know. Right, okay, whatever. Yeah, no yeah. But as I got older, and I look back. <laughs> yeah, but you know, as I got older and I look back on it and I told her about it, I realized, you know, that the Holy Spirit was just letting me know that that that's your wife. And uh, you know, I, I had to uh, let me see how I want to say this. I had to break up a home a little bit to, to get her. <laughs> now, she had a boyfriend, but, oh. I, uh, you know, when she got older. Uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, you know, I had to pursue her a little bit because uh, even though God told me she was mine, I had to go and get her, you know. But that was many years later. <laughs> yeah, that was years later, years down the road. So that's, that's basically what it, what it boiled down to. And she tried to resist for a while, you know, she played hard to get. You know how y'all do. Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> yes. yes. hard to get. She yes. played hard to get for a minute. I just kept pursuing. And eventually uh, she realized that, you know, we were meant to be together. So mm -hmm. that's but the way. Just to, to piggyback on that, the key thing he said, not just playing hard to get, but we became friends first. Yeah. Yes. We became yes. friends first. And that was real important. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. being friends helped us get through some of the times that we had after we were married yeah. that were not so easy, mm -hmm. that Absolutely. were hard. So being, we had a something to fall back on, so Absolutely. to speak, the friendship. So. And a lot of people who are married today don't realize the, the, the importance of the friendship mm -hmm. oh, yeah. with one another. And when we get around to mm -hmm. these, these, these two couples, <laughs> we're going to hear the same thing. Yeah. And, um, so hopefully take all that is being poured out to you, to those that are watching. This is some rich wisdom. We have another wonderful couple in this young lady. I've known her since she was a little girl, literally out of the womb. Her mother, I love her mother so much, Tricia. She loved her girl so much, and I know that the, the, the womanness that is in you and your sister has a lot to do with that that was poured into you by your mother. Francis and Brandon, they are a young married couple. But when I tell you this couple know how to love and show it wherever they are, they'll be riding in the car. <laughs> they will be riding in the car. And I've seen them on Facebook. <laughs> They may be young in age, but they they have an old soul. <laughs> They're playing music from the 70s. Okay. And oh, yeah. rocking it. Yes. yes. <laughs> and they just having a good time. Or they'll be at, I've seen them at events and they're just dancing and having a good time. And they have such a beautiful baby girl. I am so proud of them. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Princess and Brandon Johnson. Thank you so much for being on. Thank you for having us. Yeah. I'm so proud of you too. Now, how many years of marriage has this been? And let us know your love story. Let me see if he knows the answer. Oh, 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 but I was, I, I thought he was cute, but I, you know, <laughs> he wasn't my top uh, oh, choice I, right there. Okay. Yeah, I thought he was really cute. And then um, after high school. Oh, we my, were neighbors, by the way. Oh, yeah, we were neighbors. Yeah, we were neighbors in high school. Yeah, his she mom lived, lived like, right, right behind me. Yeah, right behind me. So you're from Phoenix City as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't yeah. know that. Oh, so yeah. he would text me, like, do you have any snacks? And I would bring them back. <laughs> We never went anywhere. Then my mom saw him he one day at the grocery store and was like, I saw this boy, he is so cute. He said his name, Brandon, you know him? And I'm like, Brandon, who? And she was like, he said Brandon Johnson. I'm like, oh, yeah, I know him. So then I text him, and then that night he brought me some Oreo ice cream. Uh, We've been together since then. Oh, yeah, that's some pink Starburst. Yeah. Okay. Brandon said, so you can't even have the details now. Yeah, work with you. Got to work with you. But that was when I was I was eighteen. And 
you were 19, so yes. Wow, I am so proud of you all. And now you all are in business together. Mm -hmm. We are, yeah, that's fun. Yeah. Um, it works good because we're so much alike, but we're so different. Mm -hmm. So in business, it works out really good. And whatever. The balance is yeah, it's good. a, yeah. Cause and what type of business is it? Um, real estate. Real estate. Real estate, awesome. yeah. Yes. And we do it in Atlanta now, but we're moving back to Columbus. Oh. We have missed home so, so much. So, so yeah. I'm so proud. I'm so excited. Yes, so they're, uh, they have their own. Is it your own company, pretty mm -hmm. much? I love that. And I saw that, and I said, I am so proud of you. Young couple, un mm -hmm. young entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. working together. So proud of you. Mm -hmm. So thank you for being on, too, thank to share you. and be that voice for other young couples. Mm -hmm. And, wow. Saving the best for last, <laughs> oh, yeah. because you don't know what we know. <laughs> Those that are watching. First of all, I will say, never underestimate the people in your presence, or the places that you are, or events, or wherever it may be. I feel like I met some of my best friends when I met these people. Oh my God, I'm getting so emotional when I think about it. <laughs> I met Mr. and Mrs. War at a wedding just a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. January 12th. Oh, wow. January 12th, yeah. that's right. Mm -hmm. And Janice and Ward, Ward um, they were dancing on the dance floor. It was an anniversary dance. Mm -hmm. And when we have an anniversary dance, when my husband and I, are, those that know, we're in business as well, when we do an anniversary dance, the last couple on the dance floor is the one that has been married the longest. We never know what the year may be. Mm. Got lonely it, up there. <laughs> yeah, he said it got lonely. <laughs> 52 years wow. of marriage. Mm. Wow. He's getting ready to be 53. No, 52. 52. 52. February 14. Yeah. On Valentine's, Valentine's Day. Day. Uh -huh. And this show will air on Valentine's Day. So. Happy Thank you. <laughs> and happy Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. So welcome again. Thank you for being a part because I know you had something going on with your schedule, but you said we'll be there. Yeah, we'll be Thank there. you we'll so try, much. Yeah. And I just always, me and my husband, when we're out, we love weddings. This is 25 years for us, but this is what we aspire to have, mm -hmm. to be married with longevity mm -hmm. and still, still have that youth, love. still be in love. That's, That's it. <laughs> That's it. So let us know how it started with you all. No, it's kind of strange with us. Uh, we started dating in 1964, and uh, she was a year younger than me in school. And I can remember we were, I can remember we were passing <laughs> notes in high school, mm -hmm. coming out of one class and giving her notes, you know, and getting the next, but. First time I saw her, I, I knew that I loved her. I mean, you know, and to me, she's the only woman in the world. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I, I couldn't imagine life without oh, her. And you were only 16 and you realized that. I did. You're such a smart man. <laughs> <laughs> but you gotta have, you know, there's four things in, in, when you're married or when you're in love. You gotta have, you gotta have love, first of all. Yes. And you gotta have trust, mm -hmm. you know. And you gotta have understanding. Mm -hmm. You gotta understand each other. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta have patience. Sometimes. Yes. Because, you know, even at two, uh, seven years or 28 years or whatever, 52 years, you still don't always get it right. That's right. Yes. I mean, you know, there's Working things that come up and, you know, there's there's bumps in the road, but mm -hmm. fortunately, you know, we, we can work it out. Yes. You People know. need to know. So you can hit me over the head with a frying pan and I'll say, yes, dear. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know but it's, it's, it's That's how I start picking up off the floor. <laughs> I began dating in 64 and I went, went in the Army in 65 and I came back from Vietnam and I really hadn't planned on stopping back by because, it was, you know, when I went to Nam, I said, look, you know, I don't know what's going to go on. what you said in the letters. You know, I do, do, you know, do this, you know. And yes. When I came back, I think I had about 10 days of leave time left or something like that. And then uh, I don't even know who proposed to who. I think she proposed to me. <laughs> Yeah. How, how was it, Jen? That, that was when he was laying on the floor. 
Man. But I had a few oh, days. Really. We, we hadn't planned on we hadn't planned on Valentine's <laughs> Day, but, it, you know. <laughs> but I had a few days leave left, and we decided yeah, to get married. So we went down to the courthouse and got married. And uh, yeah, I didn't have no fancy wedding. We didn't have. We, but we got married on Valentine's Day, and my first son was born on Christmas Day, and then uh, our second son was born two days after Halloween. We thought he was going to be a Halloween baby. Okay. <laughs> so. Uh, but it's, it's, it's been great. I, I mean, I, I love her. We have two great granddaughters. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And the oldest one is 26. And she has three kids of her own. Three great grandkids. Yeah, we got, so, so we yeah. got great grand, grandbabies. And tell us why. Mm -hmm. One thing about I've learned uh, about you two, you never stop dancing. No, that's something we have in common. I mean, it's uh, we were in a dance club. We began in 97, wasn't it? Yeah, we started a dance club. <clears throat> and we met, a bunch of other friends. We met a lot of people. A lot of people that was in the dance club were uh, classmates that we'd gone to school with. Yeah. Or that we had known, and so we, we all got together. Uh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, we'd rent the firefighters' hall. We'd have a dance monthly. We'd go to Panama City twice a year, and, and everybody would meet yeah. down there. Our friend Gene Melvin lives in Phoenix City, and him and his <clears throat> wife that's passed away. <clears throat> uh, no. That's where he met Don at in Panama City because that's where he was from. Mm -hmm. And so he's been doing a get together, uh, the Beach Bum reunion, for 35 years. Wow. And we couldn't even go this April because of the tornado. Okay. It messed him up. We couldn't go in October. So mm -hmm. hopefully, maybe this May, okay. April or May. But you need something as a couple or a married people. You need something that you, you can, love together. That yeah. you love together. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be dancing, it can yeah. be anything. It's mm -hmm. something that you can share intimately, you know. Yeah. That's good. That, that link dancing. between you, you know, but mm -hmm. you know, yeah. I, I, I couldn't imagine my life without her. I mean, oh, I love it. Oh. I couldn't. I mean, oh. I mean, we have our ups and downs, you know, but yeah. I, you know, I couldn't. Oh, yeah, with that hot and heavy sometimes. I love it. I love it. <laughs> yeah. So that's what you're going to get. You're going to get a whole lot of love here today yeah. on the show. Yeah. We're going to take a break, and we're going to come back. And then we have some questions and comments that came from social media. And then also, we're going to share with you uh, a little bit more about, you know, some of our experience. And then I'll let you know about mine. We'll be back after this. You're watching Street Talk. There's no better to than the two of us. I think you're forgetting about Dunkin' Go Do's. Two bacon, egg, and cheese for my fun. Bacon. All oh, this two is a much better two. Get two for two egg and cheese wraps, two for four bagels with cream cheese spread, and two for five bacon, egg, and cheese croissants with Dunkin' Go Do's. America runs on Dunkin'. Welcome back to Street Talk. Um, again, we are on location at Dunkin' Donuts in Phoenix City. We're having our Valentine's special and all of our wonderful guests here. We're having a great love talk. Um, it's about love, relationships, and marriage. Hey, I am very mm -hmm. grateful because I thank God for being married to a man that understands you know, know what a provider is. Yes. And that's what he is. Mm -hmm. He is a protector. He's a provider. He's a supporter. He's an encourager. Uh, he's a covering mm -hmm. for his family. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate that. And some women they don't know what that is. He's the same. And a lot of women. A lot of women don't understand. So mm -hmm. let's chime in a little bit to help mm -hmm. people to understand. You know, some people don't know. Mm -hmm. It's sad to say, you know, the roles are reversed, and I mm -hmm. put it that way. Today you lose your they have reversed. What happened? <laughs> I want to help some men and some women. The roles have reversed. Yeah. Society's changed. Yeah, that's true. Man, you know. I think some of it comes from, I mean, some women, I mean, maybe men too, but I think a lot of women become desperate for love and desperate for that companionship that they're willing to make oh, sacrifice a lot of sacrifices, yeah, whether right. that be them having to provide for him because maybe he's, mm -hmm. you know, falling on hard times right now. But I think when someone is really, really, maybe not desperate, but pretty much desperate for love and just really, really want that and that's their goal, that there's a lot of sacrifices that comes with it that they're willing to do because wow. they want it so bad, wow. so well, badly. So I think maybe that's, that's why for some people at least. Desperation. Yeah. And some, some people give them. up on love too. I mean, you yeah. You know, they, they, they accept and they shouldn't. What I mean by that is, you know, if you're looking for love and you, 
and you just meet someone and you're so desperate to, mm -hmm. for that for that relationship that you just kind of force yourself into it and it and it's really not there. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then you pay for it in the end. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's good. Yeah. And you wonder how did I get there? Well, <laughs> you not know, only end up breaking someone's heart, but you break your own heart. Exactly. Mm -hmm. so, and if you've got children or someone involved, and there's a lot of children, there's a lot of single mothers today. For whatever reason, there is a lot of single mothers. Mm -hmm. You know, and I agree, hard. some of them, some of them, and, and I can't say that if I was a woman, I would be different. If I had two child, or two children, and I was struggling in life, and, and I found some man that would take care of me, and he loved me, and whether I loved him or not, I would probably sacrifice that, and, mm -hmm. you know, for that security. Yeah. You know? I can say for myself, when I uh, decided to marry my husband, and I was aware uh, again, he's, his daughter was 10 months old when we started dating. And of course, we were young, so we dated eight years before we married. Mm -hmm. But I went in knowing that we were one. And the reason I could do that is because I saw it demonstrated in my exactly. father. Because mm -hmm. when he married Mama, he said, we are all going to be one. Mm -hmm. And so... My name was changed when her name was changed. Mm -hmm. You don't hardly see a whole lot of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he said, we are all going to be the same. And he, Step never came up in the household. That's daddy. Mm -hmm. You know. And so he, he, he is just such a blessing in my life. But he showed me how the, the role of a father and the role of a husband and the role of a man. So by the time I married my husband, I already knew what to expect in a man because my daddy had showed me. I saw him demonstrate and, so and I saw how he loved my mom mm -hmm. and how he honored my mom and how he respected my mom. Well, not all, not all couples that have their luxury. Yeah. Exactly. So they don't, it's a blessing. Not, yeah. not all of them come up with a, with a with a father or mother or loving family, you know, and and you go out and you have to create your own. You, yeah. you take it step by step. That's what I was saying. You got to be understanding. Mm -hmm. You got to be patient because you know. There's yeah, this, parents. Even though mm -hmm. we've been married 15 years, we still got differences. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you have to have you have to have patience. You know, you have mm -hmm. to you have to do that. But but there's a lot of there's a lot of people today that that, that don't share that that luxury. Like I say, that they had had a loving family and someone that to urge them into marriage yeah. or something. They didn't But I think when you, I'm sorry, you're addressing the question about yeah. why is it so different now is because we have an abundance now yeah. of broken families. Yeah. So you don't have, yeah, everyone didn't have a mother and a father in the home to show them the roles and how love should That's be. True. True. But, but it was not a lot That's that right. way. Now, that is the norm yeah. when you have broken families. So. You, you have young men who are raised by mothers, nothing wrong with seeing the mothers praise God for them, but who's showing them how to be a man, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. So you don't have distinct roles, not saying that you got to do certain things, but you don't have someone that's showing you, you don't have a pattern set before you to show you how to be successful in a marriage, how to be successful as a husband, how to be successful as a wife, or how just to be successful as a woman or as a man, where well, you don't have to settle, per se, exactly. just to say that you have someone. Because God created us, all of us, that Amen. we have to have love. That's, That's right. just something we have to have. I mean, it's just like having water and food. Mm -hmm. But just to have that, and you haven't had a pattern set before you, you'll settle right. for anything yeah. just to say, I have someone. Yeah, and so I think that's what has happened to society. But you have to have you have to have God in relationship Definitely. with you. Absolutely. And Definitely. you need God in your family. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, That's right. I thank God every morning I get up and I thank Him every night and every mm -hmm. day. Absolutely. You know. and, and in between our arguments. And you know, in between our arguments, yes. <laughs> some people don't understand, and let's help some people to understand what, when, when do you, you know, because I feel like love is, real love is unconditional. Mm -hmm. As mm -hmm. you know, and some people don't understand that. So, when did, you know, like, just like my husband, he shared our part. He knew that it was unconditional because I can love Caressa, our oldest daughter, like she's my very mm -hmm. own. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And even though 
being in a marriage for a long period of time, we haven't always agreed on everything mm -hmm. the same way, but we, you know, we work at it to come to an agreement, mm -hmm. if that so, makes sense. Mm -hmm. you know? And and I it just it hurts my heart when I see people get married and they feel like they can do a marriage like they do an automobile, yes. trade in. <laughs> I want a new one. Yeah. I want the well, next thing to Sometimes just come when out. it gets a little rough, it's like you said, unconditional love. By that you mean you accept everything. <laughs> You accept it. You accept or it. Or you don't go into it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you know, accept it's it. It's like you're saying, you know, you don't just you don't just stop because you have an argument yeah. or, or because you don't agree on something or, or whatever. Yes. You know, you don't stop. Mm -hmm. Yes, <laughs> you know. You try to work through it. <laughs> Marriage is work. Yeah. That's well, what it, it's, but me, it's a good work. Is, yes. Let me say this, too. I, after just kind of observing, and we were talking... Earlier we said society has changed. Well, it has, but the thing about it, people don't, they don't value commitment anymore. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Loyalty and commitment. You see it everywhere. I mean, you see it even in sports. I mean, NFL, it's time to trade. I want to go to another team. I don't want to play with y'all anymore. I don't, yeah. it's, it's a thing where commitment is very important, mm -hmm. but if you don't see it that way, mm -hmm. then you'll think that you can just hop around and go from, you know, pillow to post, bed to whatever. And I think that's what's missing, even with, with men. You know, some some younger men, they don't have a mentor, they don't have a man to show them how to be a man. And so they they don't know what to do. And, and they once they face a little difficulty or a little hardship, then it's like, well, forget that. I'll just, yeah, you know, you know. And you know, that's the thing. Um, I think that's what's really missing, at least part of what's missing. Right. Commitment. commitment. Especially yeah. with men. That's now, true. They've lost the sense of commitment. They've abdicated their responsibility, you know, to be committed to someone and to say, hey, I'm with you. We're going to be together. We're going to make this work. We're going to stick it out, whatever it takes. Yeah. And I think that's what's missing. You know, nobody wants to really be committed anymore. Right. If it's not working for them, then that selfish nature takes over and they say, well, I'll just move on because, you know, this ain't working, so I ain't got to stay. Well, that's why that's the not the way it works. Yeah. So mm -hmm. high, I mean, you know, yeah. mm -hmm. That's not the way it works. I know yes. we're older, you know, and I hate, I don't use that word loosely, you know, but yeah. Right. Yeah. back when we were dating and we first got married, that's what you did. You got married and you stayed married. And you stayed yeah. married. You yeah. fought yeah. through your problems. You talked through your problems. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, but, wow. So, you got something you want to say, Yeah, Council? I was going to say, um, without getting too deep, but I think that a lot of times, too, which I agree with what, every, what everyone said about, what, you know, the commitment thing, but I'm thinking about like older people in my family that I know how their relationships were. They accepted a lot. Mm -hmm. The men did a lot. Of, there were a lot mm -hmm. of outside children, and mm -hmm. I think now, That's which real. I like, women aren't accepting that. We're like, I don't, I don't have to take this. You're mm -hmm. not going to have five children on me right. and mm -hmm. leave and then come back mm -hmm. and you're oh, yeah. drunk and you just mm -hmm. been out doing mm -hmm. this, this, this. They accepted a lot, and I know mm -hmm. that from a lot of people mm -hmm. in my family that mm -hmm. are way older. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's a humongous yeah. part of why relationships last so long. Because now we're like, okay, bye. Um, yeah. Back then, the women were just like, okay, like they knew Very about fast, all of the outside yeah. children. They were okay with it. Like, wow. Yeah. So I think that's yeah. a yeah. huge Sometimes part of the, it. Uh, yeah. Loyalty can be a, a, a faulty side, right? So yeah. If you're, if you're so loyal that you say whatever a person oh, do to you, that, that's kind of that's a crazy mm -hmm. level. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's good. A crazy yeah, level that, that's true. Yeah. That's, that's good, true. Brandon. And I think that's the part, like unconditional love. Like I, you can definitely have that in a marriage, and you should. Like I feel like we have that, but the most unconditional love is your mom and your dad. Are too. And the reason I say that is because, like, I think some people maybe misinterpret, like, I, I can't love someone unconditionally, but allow them to um, leave out of my life or say I don't want to be with them. I think you can. Mm -hmm. I can love you unconditionally, but if you are out of line and you do something, you know, especially mm -hmm. constantly to disrespect me, then mm -hmm. I can still love you, but mm -hmm. I'm not going to, you know what I'm saying, allow myself to be... Right. Mistreated like yeah. that. So yeah. I think I can devalue. You can yeah. You're not going to allow yourself to be devalued Absolutely. as well. Yeah. You yeah. can love someone to the point unconditionally to let yeah. them go. Exactly. Yeah. You know, yes. you know, that's nothing exactly. wrong with that. Just because you love someone doesn't mean that 
Mm -hmm. It's meant for you two to be together. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. And you know, and, yeah, oh, that's good. I'm, no, I'm sorry. Good. I, I wanted to add that um, as far as like the increased rate of like divorce and people mm -hmm. not being together, I have a theory. I think that social <laughs> media oh, yeah. has a lot to play. You can you can go on social media and find any kind of woman, any man you want, and hook up with them just like yeah. that. It's so accessible mm -hmm. to cheat now. I don't no. think it's social media though, because like like Chris was saying earlier, like we have grandfathers, <laughs> great grandfathers with children that mm -hmm. we don't know about. As you know, as it was taboo then. No, it wasn't taboo. No, like, <laughs> it, 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 it was a lot. It was a lot. was a lot. Well, I'm not going to say my, let's say my family, some people in my family have mm -hmm. outside children. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. a, it's, it's common. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, yeah. But well, was it a blended situation? Like, did no, those women mm -hmm. talk so, to each other? Or cheat, was they okay. cheat, stepping well, out. A married man <laughs> and a married woman, right? The married man has three girlfriends yeah. and three children. Well, yeah. Yeah. That's not exactly. supposed to happen. Exactly. That's right. And that, and that was before That's right. social media. Yeah. Like, social exactly. Media. Yeah. exactly. I just think it's accessible. Yeah. yeah. But More temptation accessible. is everywhere, though. If you want to do what you want to do, it. Yeah. I think people right. use social media as an excuse. Like, I don't yeah. care. If it it's right in your easier. face. I yeah. Think, yeah, I'm not going to make it easier. Yeah, I think, I mean, maybe some people are more tempted with it, but... It mm -hmm. makes it easier. It, it makes it easier to, if to they're communicate. Going to, so I get what you're saying. Yeah. 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 If they're going to yeah. do it, they're going to do it. Now, yes. you're seeing right. the, different, yeah, the difference in the generation mm -hmm. now. Well, yeah. I'm going to tell you the bottom line is... <laughs> <laughs> the bottom line is <laughs> the Bible is a blueprint for life. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's good. It is. It's a blueprint for life. Oh yeah, it is. Oh yeah. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. you don't need to deviate, go somewhere else, and say, "Well, this is what I think now," or "This is what Joe Blow says," and this is okay. But it's not. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I agree with you. There, there's, there's a lot of people out there that, that can commit, but a lot of fathers don't, don't commit. And I'm not putting all the blame on the fathers, but it's their responsibility right. to be the head of a household. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. You know, and mm -hmm. you shouldn't go out there and you shouldn't be married to one woman and go out and be dating four or five mm -hmm. and have children by them. I mean, that's, mm -hmm. that's, that's just that. Oh, yeah. I, as a woman, if I was a woman, I wouldn't tolerate it. Nope. Yeah. So but some of them get yourself in the situation yeah. Yeah. economically where they have to do that though, well, because they have to survive. I'm going to make that clear. I, I love... My husband, unconditionally, <laughs> Me too. but baby, that's right. He know I'm dealing with okay. no foolishness. Exactly. Right. <laughs> and and so that, in no, that, real quick, I, I ain't dealing with no yeah. foolishness. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 Let me tell you why yeah. too, because my mama dealt with it, and I saw what mm -hmm. she dealt with. Yeah. Yeah. She broke it. Yeah. Yes. she broke it. There so go. therefore, I didn't have to deal. And with I think it. each there one of it, every one of us knows somebody that's close to us that's been in that situation. Wow, 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 wow. He jokes with me all the time about. When somebody comes mm -hmm. knocking on the door, they're going to be saying they're looking for me. <laughs> that was a joke because I was in Vietnam. <laughs> well, we got some questions. We're going to let Monica okay. say something. Then, Aureli, we're going to let you share what we got coming in. And and um, so we're going to let Monica okay. say what she's going to say. I was going to comment take a break. on the unconditional. I think when you were saying unconditional, because like Ms. Roy was saying that um, Bible-based, for Christians, the Bible is a blueprint. And we are to get to a love, that agape love, where you do love unconditionally. It doesn't mean that you tolerate foolishness. But what we try to do in you know, like ministry, mm -hmm. we need to address things before right, yeah. marriage. And That's a lot right. of times you see that this man or this woman is a cheater. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But women have a tendency to say, oh, but I can change him. Yeah. Can change, so yeah. it's not that you don't kind of, sometimes, nothing is 100 foot bulletproof all the time. Sometimes, very rarely, you don't know these things about the man's character. But most of the time, you do know that he has or she has yeah, these good. tendencies before you marry him. That so on that level, it's really not. So that's a bad judgment call that way. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's like, yeah. okay, I may love you. In this 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 um, this physical fleshy type love, That's but right. you're not what I need, That's right. and so you have to then sever before you get into the covenant of marriage. That's true. Yeah. If you can do that, look at the marriages themselves would be sacred, and exactly, and you wouldn't have mothers that are without husbands and without support for their children. You wouldn't have the children yeah. if everybody had a better understanding. And I I agree with you. I mean. Yeah. I was if it was a if it was a a legislative fact, I would pass. I would vote for it. I would vote for premarital 
California. California. Well, some yeah. states do have it where yeah. it is required. Well, you wow. know, yeah, before, it needs to before be. they <clears throat> issue marriage license, yeah. they do kind of require okay. it. So well, thing. we're going to take a quick break, and we're going to come back in. We're going to come back with some um, questions from social media. And then also, at some point, I want you to expound more on the covenant of marriage because I understand that, but people need to understand that. And that's real good what you're saying is they need to understand you know a better foundation before they get mm -hmm. into it because a lot of times the handwriting is on the wall mm -hmm. but they want to i can change that mm -hmm. i can change that we'll be right back you're watching street talk with loretta rose here on ctvb there's no better two than two buddy cops right man what about duncan go twos two egg and cheese wraps for two dollars oh yeah that is a great two Get two for two egg and cheese wraps, two for four bagels with cream cheese spread, and two for five bacon, egg, and cheese croissants with Dunkin' Go-To's. America runs on Dunkin'. Welcome back to Street Talk, and happy Valentine's Day, everyone. We are having a great Valentine's special here at Dunkin' Donuts here in Phoenix City, and I would like to thank them for uh, letting us come in and uh, host the show. So thank you, Dunkin' Donuts. All right, we have some questions that came in through social media, and so Arely, she's going to share it with us. What you, what you have? Okay. So the first question that we have is from a teenage girl, and she says, how can I be patient waiting for real love? How so can she be patient? It's hard for her to wait. So oh, she mm -hmm. wants to know what she can do to be more patient. Well, wait, what's she's, her a, she's a teenager. She's a teenager. I, it's anonymous. I oh, okay. I would say um, that that shouldn't be her focus right now. Like you don't even know yourself yet. You know what I mean? Um, get to know yourself. Figure yourself out. Enjoy your own company because um, I think that's so important. Like don't just look for someone else to fulfill you. You know what I mean? Um, so just grow into yourself first and. When your hold and your other hold will come. So. Good. I love that. Good. That's yeah, great. Very good. Just wait, girl. That's very good. That's <laughs> yes. good. Why is she? Why is she? Why is she looking for love so early? I mean, that's right, Mr. Brown. Yeah. Why is she impatient? Well, you know, I think having the opportunity to work with teenagers in high school, and Monica has worked with children still as do. well, <laughs> and still do. They're in a lot of pressure. Peer and, pressure. Yeah, they're in a lot of peer pressure, and. It is so different now than when it was when we went to mm -hmm. school. Mm -hmm. Things that they're dealing with, and and I think they're trying to find themselves in someone else. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And just like Princess said, get to know who you are. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Because I thank God, you know, like I said, everybody didn't have someone to nurture them and tell yeah. them as yeah. a twelve-year-old, thirteen-year-old, wait on God, mm -hmm. you know. I did. That's what I did. And, but everybody, right. this generation today now, oh my gosh. I She'll end up becoming a statistic instead, yeah. of, instead mm. of finding someone to love. That's good. I mean, bro. and you don't want to do that. I mean, that's rushing into something, you know, and love is going to find you. Ooh, I mean, I don't, that's you know hard. what makes it Some, hard? Someone's going to find you. you know, <laughs> I'm sorry, you know what makes it hard? What creates that pressure? Social is. media. I agree. People the posting these photos, this false facade of mm -hmm. what a relationship is. Mm -hmm. The Dating relationship sites. that I'm in is very private. You mm -hmm. will not find one photo of him until he's my husband. Good. And it's good. You Love know, and, and that's it. You know, because people bounce around in different relationships. And with social media, when you post everything, you start following them. Dang, they broke up with them. Oh, my goodness. They're so mm -hmm. inconsistent. They're dating somebody else. That doesn't help. Mm -hmm. You know, so I yes. just feel like this is only the track record. <laughs> the track record. Yeah. You know, it's not a good thing, you know. And you with you working in media, you get to see a lot mm -hmm. of what happens on social media yes. because your um, profession is driven a lot around mm -hmm. that. Unfortunately, and, yes. Yeah, so you get to see a lot of that that inconsistency as well. Um, that's good. That's good. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. real good. What, what you got um, next? Also, it's just being a, being a teenage girl myself and the social media thing, 
you see it posted constantly about, oh, well, this girl is just in this relationship, and now she's in this relationship, and yet I've never had a boyfriend. So you kind of feel like you should. Yeah. I'm picky, <laughs> and I don't do that. <laughs> Good. So. Well, you're selling but, yourself out is what you're doing. Mm -hmm. It's peer pressure. You're just selling yeah. yourself out, and you can't do that. Well, you, guys you know what I would do? I'd find some new friends. <laughs> I'd find an organization or, or a youth activity group at church or something and get involved. 52 years? I mean, that's what I would do. Mm -hmm. 52 I'm years, sorry. right? Yes. Do you feel the need? I, I'm not trying to take over. I'm just curious for my own self. Yes. Do you feel the need to post every photo of mm -hmm. every moment? Hey, I. The only time I go on Facebook is my granddaughter says, Papa, look, there's a picture of, <laughs> of, your, of your great grandchild on there. You know, I, I was just curious. Uh, I just I feel like people that do that are yeah. really aren't in a good. I could be wrong. I'm sorry well, if I'm wrong, but I feel like they're that. not in a good relationship. They're trying to validate their relationship, well, even though it's mm -hmm. not as good as it comparing. portrays. If Start they're doing yeah. that, they need That's to reevaluate themselves mm -hmm. okay. or have someone reevaluate yeah. them. I have a comment on that. Um, which me personally, we don't really post a whole lot of ourselves. Um, I, mean, I just really don't post that much at all, period. But for, um, I feel like people, um, I don't know, maybe have a misconception of couples uh, in social media. And um, like I have a few friends that are in relationships that do post a lot. Um, and some, that's just what some people do. Like, you know, we're, you know, especially with younger people who've grown up since, you know, MySpace age and all that, you know, that era. But, <laughs> Um, that's a part of their world, like, that's yeah. fun for them, and I don't think it's fair to um, think that because um, that these particular people want to share their world with, you know, all of us, and they're so proud of these moments together, mm -hmm. that that means they're not happy. I don't think it means that. That's just... Yeah. What they want to share, yeah. like events. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. that's just yeah. They just, and that's not the millennial. That, that, yeah. And, and <laughs> I'm just speaking yeah. to that. And I'm not, you know, yeah. she I has a point it. because we have millennials. We have a 25 year old, 22 year old, and a 19 year old getting ready to be 20 year old. Mm -hmm. But in that, like Arali said, she knows who she knows who she is, mm -hmm. and because even with our young adults children, but mm -hmm. young adults, mm -hmm. um, especially our oldest, our 25 year old, she shares. But she feels as if people share too much personal. Mm, exactly. Some things everybody don't yeah. need to know. Exactly. And she will say a lot of people, especially if you don't know who you are, exactly. you're not whole yourself like you spoke of earlier. Mm -hmm. You start to compare yourself mm -hmm. with Absolutely. what's on exactly. Facebook because you're already not in a healthy space. Mm -hmm. And so when you start comparing, because most people, you rarely see anybody posting anything other than a prayer request that's negative. <laughs> Everything exactly. that's posted yeah. is all roses and sunshine and, and whatever. Be, yeah, it, it, it I understand, be, yeah. but for people who are not whole and they right. see this and they're comparing themselves, mm -hmm. that can spark a hole. Because there's research that shows there's a connection between the increase of social media right. and depression. Mm -hmm. So you can get that part. And, but it still goes back to the person. It's still yeah. a choice. It's still a decision. But so it does have a part in it. Yeah. And peer pressure and social media makes you... It makes it gets it puts the pressure on you to exceed at whatever Reality. out there that you it's feel like realistic. you don't yeah. have in your life. <laughs> right. and then, you know, that's a negative approach. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, and then people yeah. put negative things on there and they expect all the friends to comment stuff yeah. like that. That's just pulling you in. Mm -hmm. Yes. I don't never mean about that into that. Exactly. Before the show ugly or you told me something that was important in regards to what Oprah said. Mm -hmm. I believe that there's substance in that mm -hmm. about what was it again? Uh, I shared with Nicole when she shared with me and the reason I wanted her to be on because she has a sweet love story and it's a story of hope for others and but it's very private and I was sharing with her that Oprah shared many years ago when she had her talk show with Beyonce about keeping her love life her personal mm -hmm. life with her husband, with Jay-Z, private. private. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of time when people see them, she don't say nothing. Mm -hmm. And they always say, no caption, you know. you know. <laughs> Beyonce has learned, and she took that advice from Oprah. I'll never forget that show. I can see it as if it's just aired. And Oprah shared her experience with Beyonce, and it has worked. For her. That's why Oprah and Stephen still together, mm -hmm. regardless of what people may want to put, 
-hmm. and Beyonce and Jay Z are still together, regardless of how what people want to make. And they're it married, and Oprah's not. So that just goes to tell you, you don't have to be married or whatever. <laughs> No, no, no. I mean, I mean, you know, it, it, what works for you, yeah. like Oprah, her relationship sure. with She's him. Ready to get married, so yes, mm -hmm. and makes it work. But their relationship <laughs> works well for them, You're right? Mm -hmm. Exactly, and and that's what I love of the beauty of the show today is we're we're ha we're talking, touching things on marriage, relationship, and love. It's all is all of that. So I, I said I was very proud of you for that because mm -hmm. a lot of women, even though you're 35. But a lot of people, and I see it all the time on social media, posting all of this, all in the bath, oh, excuse yeah. me. But you know, wow. people yeah. all in the restroom, sharing all of this. Mm. Some things just, just don't need fun. to be, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let, let it be where yeah. it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you well, know? Our, our, censor, our censors, our censorship laws have changed and they're too lax. Mm -hmm. I mean, let's face it, you can turn on, it used to be, Certain movies had to come on at nine, but now it's it used to be nine, <laughs> eight, seven. Yeah, it's any time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Any time of the day yeah, you can watch it. Supposed to be a family show and it come yeah. on at eight o'clock. I got ugly words. Well, it's got a, it's got a rating, you know, for a, for a after eight show. But I don't think that the the, uh, the stations do that. I'm not knocking mm -hmm. knocking any stations right. in town, you know. But I just think that that. That that uh, censorship law has been too lax, so has been relaxed enough to be comfortable. Is it still a such, such thing? <laughs> <laughs> Some stations allow you to say GD. Yeah. You yeah. know, which yeah. I think is off limits. Yeah. 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 Wow. So society has a lot to do. Well, with society the way affects that ninety percent of the people what they think and what they do. I mean, mm. let's just face it. Well, a lot of things today is all about money. Thanks. So, I had a question. Uh, well, Rayleigh, you got another one? There are lots of them. Okay. What? No. Well, we gotta, we're going to try to get what we can. Let's try to get all that we can then. So, the next one is, I like this one here. Would you rather have an extraordinary love that doesn't last forever or an ordinary love that does? Ooh. Ooh. Mm. I'd like to say, I think extraordinary love can only come from God and that's just my personal opinion and everything else is, you know, here is just ordinary, it's just love, but an extraordinary love, that's only really something that you can get from, from God and from yourself. Wow. But that one was asked actually three times. Oh, that's a loaded question. Yeah, I that's, yeah that's kind of thing. If, you, if you've got extraordinary love, then you've got a love that's potentially going to last forever. And yes. it's up to the two individuals to, to see it that work. it does. Make it work. Exactly. 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 You know? And to make it extraordinary. If you want it to work bad enough, you'll work to make it. And you, Candace and I do things that, and they're not bad things, but we do things that kind of, Keep a little excitement in our life. Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, really, really, you know. Uh, several years back, we used to we used to write. I used to write to Led Dinkwa when they had the little poems you could put in there for Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. I know y'all don't remember that because y'all are too exactly. young. But I, every every Valentine's Day, I would write one, and she would write mm -hmm. one. And then when they quit accepting that, they quit doing it. Then I would write them and put them on a windshield of a car or something. Yeah. Yeah. That's a loaded question. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I think um, because you, I serve a God that's extraordinary, he wants me to have that's right. extraordinary. But you can't have extraordinary without having longevity. That's exactly it's right. It's a journey. That's right. Well, that that's so the longer. Because he had a picture of me in my bikini above his sunglasses. <laughs> <laughs> cut that. So, cut, you know, cut. <laughs> That's it. I mean, so because you 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 are the long, you know, you are married, and it's work, but it's good work. You work towards the extraordinary. So your marriage is as ordinary as you let it be. That's right. How you allow it to be. So it's like a job. You have to work at it yeah, every day. But it's a, it's a job that you love. That's it's right. what you're called you to it. do. You know what I'm saying? 
And you so, don't realize you're working at yeah. it, but you and are. So you, you make up your mind because I I mean, everything God tells me I can have, I want. So mm -hmm. I receive that. So mm -hmm. it's not, you know. They don't do it just to afford work too much work. You know, they just give up too easily. So, exactly. So, work but it's the more you work at it, the easier it gets. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Type of thing. So I think you, you can have extraordinary because you, I serve a God that's extraordinary and he can show me how Amen. to have that Amen. in my marriage. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So let's let's try to get some more in, Aureli. Do you think that once you love someone, you will always love them, or do you think love can fade away over time? Mm. Well, I think love can fade away if you don't just. This is what we're talking about. If you don't work, if you don't work at it, you know, if you don't show that person that you love them, and if you don't do things or say things to that individual to let them know that you love them. You can't just exist from day to day with a, with a partner and not communicate and not say anything. If you do that, then you're opening the door for that passion mm -hmm. to slide out. See? You know. That's my point. You got something you want to say? I'm, I am just, I'm learning. I'm learning. That's all. You know, I've heard someone, and I have to meet him because he got a great love story. I don't know if you've heard of Mr. Richard. At Publix? No, I haven't. I gotta. I wanted him to be on, but you heard of him? I know. Do you him, understand yeah. that love? His love story? Well, I don't. I won't talk about it. From my <laughs> I don't know it in all totality, but from my understanding, it was someone that he loved, but they kind of got away from him. Mm -hmm. And from my understanding, he's in his seventies, probably, a close to eighty. Close, close to. Close to eighty, and. Um, Somehow he found her yeah. after all those years. I remember that. You, yeah, yeah. And so, and but they're married. Now. Oh wow! Look, Look at that. that. I love now. it. His life was uh, incomplete. Yes. Until he found her. Yeah, all those years later. All those years later. Oh, Somebody may be watching. That is awesome. And and the reason I say that is because I've talked to there's some men in my family that are still single. And when they look back in time, they realize that was a good one I let go. Mm -hmm. That was a good one I let go. But at what point do you start thinking and realize, okay, this is it. This is the one. I'm going to do all that I can, invest all that I am into this. You know, because I'm going to help somebody that may be watching, that may, you know, because everybody don't get it. Mm -hmm. You know, I do believe in second chance, but sometimes mm -hmm. you have to want it. Mm -hmm. And then there's some people, and I know some men, and some men in my family line, I put it that way, that I know personally, that have missed the ball many times. Mm -hmm. And now they're miserable. Mm -hmm. I can't promise you, you know, that's going to come back, but all you can do is seek God right. and get yourself that's right. right. And make you, work have to pray, on you. you have to pray about it and wait yeah. for God to and work on you. Yeah. You, have to, you have to remember that everything happens in God's timing Amen. and that love is patient like First Corinthians says yeah. love is patient and is kind it does not envy it does not boast and you have to work on yourself because mm -hmm. if you don't love yourself or have a relationship with yourself or with God mm -hmm. that all those other relationships even if you have them will not work mm -hmm. at all it's yeah. good Young wise child. Yeah, it is. That's good, right? Young wise child. That's why we say the Bible is a blueprint for life. Yes, blueprint. It has an answer for every question you can come up with. Every question you can conceivably think about. There's a reason That's true. I can't tell you where to go and then find it, but you know, it's in there. You know enough that that it has sustained you for 52 years with her. So, yeah, thank you all so much for tuning in. And I want to thank all of our guests that have been on the show today. It has been all about love, relationships, and marriage. It's been a lot in, in today's show. And I hope that you pass it on and share the knowledge. And um, just know that there is hope in love. Yes. And it is possible. But I will encourage you, and I'm pretty sure you'll get it from all of those that have shared on the show as well. Please seek God for His very best for you. Because it's beyond your imagination. We want to say Happy Valentine's to you and the love of your life. 
thank you again, Dunkin' Donuts. You've been watching Street Talk with Loretta Rose here on CTV Bean, right here in Phoenix City. Until next time, you be blessed. Happy Valentine's Day, y'all. Happy Valentine's Day. Hey. Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs>